tonight for our Saturday night worship service. We are delighted that you chose to come to New Hope Presbyterian Church this evening. And we welcome you to sing with us, to pray with us, to rejoice with us, to make the connection with God with us as we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and as we allow him to fill us up with his word and his spirit so we can leave this place and go out and share Jesus with a dying world. So consider yourselves welcome to praise God in this place. Amen? Amen. Our choir is going to sing for us just to go start the worship service and get the inspiration and in invoking the presence of God for us by singing, Come Let Us Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness.
We confess to you, Lord, what we are. We are not the people who, like others, we think we are. We are afraid to admit even to ourselves what lies in the depth of our own souls. But we do not want to hide our true selves from you. We believe that you know us as we are, and yet you still love us. Help us not to shrink from our self-knowledge. Teach us how to respect ourselves for your sake. Give us the courage to put your trust in your guiding power. Raise us out of the paralysis of guilt and fear, and take us into the freedom of the energy of your forgiven people. We ask that you would break the bond, their bodies and set them free through Jesus Christ. Repay. Amen. Amen.
assurance tonight are found in Romans chapter 8, verses 33 and 34. And our scripture tells us this. Who dares accuse those of whom God has chosen as his own? Will God? No. He is the one who has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? Will Jesus Christ? No. For he is the one who died for us and was raised to life just for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God, interceding on your and my behalf daily. The book of Romans is more than a theological explanation of God's redeeming grace, church. It's a letter to comfort us and give us confidence addressed to each one of us. It assures us that Jesus went to the cross and gathered all of our sins and took them upon himself. He became us on the cross so that we, be, we, we would become him in life. So I say tonight, let us rejoice, be exceedingly glad. We are a redeemed people, a revived people, a restored people, and we are a forgiven people. You are free from sin. Amen. Oh, Jesus. 
scripture today is going to be James 3, 13, 4 through 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that come from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter, evil, envy, and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but by earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, concerning, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness that causes fights. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires and the battles within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. You do not receive because you do not ask with wrong, when you ask with wrong motives. But you may spend what you get on pleasure on your pleasures. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Over the past 10 years, I felt like I'm bumping my head against a wall. 
I've had great jobs. I've had great impact on the lives of others. But at the end of the day, it's just one thing, right? It's just like, God, it's like, I'm back at this place. And so, once again, I didn't win, as you see. I don't know why I wrote it, because I never really thought I'd read it. But the craziest thing is, I always knew I wasn't like functioning in the, the area which God wanted to use me most. And so, throughout my four years, I knew I wanted to really performing arts. Most likely as a performer, I was a dancer formerly for 20 years before I stopped dancing and I was in the all of my life. That's really what I thought I was going to do in life. But in high school, I was successfully and unfortunately deterred from any course of study in college and career that would have allowed me to use what I thought was my most special body had given. So, after 10 years, I have my personal wall, my career, just off of my head against the wall. Three months ago, just as we had to do with the robot, God picked me up and turned me back. So I no longer have to bump it against the wall. And the path I walk on, no longer a wall at the end, it's filled with opportunities that God chooses to place before me. And there's nothing there that's going to stop me because I'm in his will now. That is the beauty of God. His love believes us. His love never gives up on us. His love is displayed daily through the walk the work, excuse me, of the Holy Spirit. I know because his love to me as I stayed up through the night every day for two weeks as the Holy Spirit slowly revealed God's plan for me when I finally decided to render my fear and be obedient to God through faith. I know because his love provides for me a husband whom by choice or by default, <laughs> there's probably a lot of the default, <laughs> he carries the heavy fight responsibility for the family while I hear, trust, and what God has called me to. And lastly, God's love is better with each frustrating feel tear that drops, the emptiness I feel from the void of life plans never realized. But most importantly, God's love is here daily whispers of the Holy Spirit that remind me that God is able, so I shall be able nothing. For this shall pass, an uncompromised shall come in the morning. After all, if God before who is me, be encouraged. God's love is here, and if we just humble ourselves and pray, surrender our fears, and trust in the call that God has for our lives, He will in turn do a great and mighty work in us. Thank you.
of your victory. Because when we decide to walk in God's calling, the challenges come before us, the slings and arrows will serve to strike us down. You will go down into the pits of hell, but you have to remember Jesus Christ came up. He ascended.
and be defined by the unshakable grace and the depth of humility that comes from Jesus Christ, who calls us, what does he call us to do? To be quick to listen and slow to speak. To be slow to anger and to welcome with meekness and humility the word that is implanted in you because it has power to save your soul. You see, in James 3, 13, 4 through 8, which our brother Ray read so eloquently, the church is being told what Alicia testified, what Corey and the man and the choir sang. The church is being told to live well, live wisely, and with humility. And if we're going to be doers of the word, then our words and actions must have a consistent basis of righteousness and integrity. And every day of your life, you get the opportunity to use discretion and wisdom. Every single day, every hour of your life, you have an opportunity to use discretion and wisdom, especially when we face opposition and disrespect. So, you know, I have a story to tell you. All right. I always seem to. All right. This will resonate with you, Alicia. When I lived in Atlanta, I worked as a speech therapist in an elementary school. And the elementary school was called Parte Elementary School. Parte. <laughs> That's actually somebody's last name, obviously. And it was in Gwinnett County, Georgia. And in 2004, our school welcomed a new principal. And she was from Los Angeles. Wow. Her name was Lisa. And I found her to be highly focused, highly professional, and highly detached. And it was during this time of her arrival that I was in a clinical pastoral experience program at a local hospital. I was studying chaplaincy, if you will, or having an experience with chaplaincy. It was grueling and enduring, and it was all kinds of things. But it was almost over, and the final ceremony and interview of our CPE program fell on the same day that the teachers were to report back to work. My CPE closing interview and ceremony began at 2 p.m. on September 8th, and the teacher workday ended at 3.30 p.m. on September 8th. Now, had the former principal been there, this would have been a non-issue. I got along fine with her. She understood my goals. She would have been like, have at it. You know, you, do, you take care of your business. But this new lady, well, I didn't really know her. So I decided to go to my CPE supervisor and get a letter from her explaining the importance of this meeting. And I went to the teacher of the principal, and I first I decided I would ask her. And so then that didn't work, and I gave her the letter. So I made an appointment with her. And I sat down with her, and as soon as I sat down, she looked at her watch. And I began to explain to her that I needed to be in the CPE program, and that um, I didn't want to be gone all day. It was just the second half of the teacher work day. And she looked at me, and she said, one plus one is two. And loyalty plus commitment equals teamwork. I can't approve of this request because it's outside of the vein of teamwork. <laughs> so I looked at her and I said, well, I'm not really asking for the whole day. You see, from 8 a.m. to 11, we'll be in an assembly with you. And then 11 to 12, there's lunch. And then after 12, we're supposed to go back to our classrooms and prepare for uh, the coming school year, get our lesson plans. And I said, but um, so my room is already prepared. I, I came back over the summer and did that. So I can be here until 1 o'clock. 
and she said, well, loyalty and sacrifice equal teamwork. And I can't believe that you would try to set a precedent to not be here on the first day of school. I said, well, I have a letter. She said, I don't need your letter. Are you finished, Miss Goodjohn? Thank you. 
sweetness of grace about us and wisdom around us. When we stand in opposition and disposition, we should be on a mission such that wisdom speaks through us, integrity will live in us, and hope will abide with us. Yes. I left that school at peace with my decision. Yes. Yes. I left that school at peace with the consequences. All right. I was at peace with understanding that I might be viewed as an upstart. It was clear to me that I would probably be written would further define my path of faith. Are you ready to define your path of faith? Uh -huh. By walking through hell with a heavenly coast. Uh -huh. I turned on the ignition in my car. And this is what I was resolved to do. Was I left. Because you see, I, I, I don't think there was ever a time when I had just broken the law, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Try to abide by the rules in the place. So while I still walked in that place of faith, I was kind of trembling because I couldn't believe I did it. <laughs> I did it. But what I was resolved to do, Shannon, was to pray more, to draw closer to God, to get in a spiritual group that could help me to read the word and to trust in the Lord our God with all our heart and lean not onto our own understanding. I was at peace with God to keep me moving forward and to do my best, realizing that everybody ain't gonna like my best. And that's just the true test of faith. Yes, yes. James said it like this, real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life that is characterized by working at a minimum to get along with others who might not want to get along with you. It is gentle and it is reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced, not always yik, yik, patty, whack, talking, 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 talking. <laughs>
It took about a year and a half. But a consistency of character always wins the day. And a lack of judgment always wins the day. Because I came to see that she wasn't so detached. She was trying to find her way too. She was trying to get her peace as well. So my friends, I wish you wisdom in your choices, discernment in your living, and faith in your soul. We must walk together in peace and faith and hope. Can somebody come pray with me?
$2 a week is a start. And guess what? That's not going to make a big dent in our budget, but it's going to make a dent in your life and you will come to realize that you can do even more. And it'll feel good and you won't miss a beat. You won't miss a latte. You won't miss a movie or anything in your life. It's the truth. And for those of you who are already pulled to the brink, just remember this. We give because God has already given us so much. It's not because God is our scratch lotto ticket and we think we give an extra hundred, he's going to bless us in the parking lot. That's not the way it works. If this church has touched your life, if it has walked with you in your crisis, in your victories, in your deaths, in your births, in your uncertainties, then give it back to God that we may continue to rejoice in his goodness. Now, as a pastor, I had not planned on doing this tonight, but the person who was going to speak got sick. So I truly am speaking from my heart. So I'd like to invite the ushers forward, and I hope that your heart was pierced tonight. And I want to invite you to rise as the ushers come forward so that we can share in a call to action. Let us share it together. Repeat after me. God's goodness, God's goodness. is why we give. God's love, God's love is why we sacrifice. God's commitment is why we love through our time, our talent, and our treasure. Bless us, God, as we give from the heart. Amen.
Thank you. This is a special place. So let us give praise and love to God. Your days will be happy. They are happy because Jesus Christ reigns on the throne. So walk in the wisdom and the peace and the love of Christ as you encounter next week in all of his victories, joys, her